must confess before you all that I was chosen and so blessed and privileged to do the introduction of our guest speaker tonight. Wow. He is currently assigned to St. Joseph Church in Pinal, California, and had previously served as deacon at Christ the King Church in Placement Hill and St. Jerome Church in El Cerrito. He was ordained as a permanent deacon in the Diocese of Oakland 22 years ago in February 1995. He received his Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from UC Berkeley. He received his Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry from the Franciscan School of Theology at the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley. He worked seven years in parish ministry as a pastoral associate. He served as an officer in the U.S. Army Infantry for five years. <laughs> completed, completed the military service as a captain. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your service. He worked 14 years in a computer industry as a system analyst, database administrator, and computer project manager. He worked also, he also worked 10 years in the health and fitness industry. Wow. And, he, and he also has been very active with the Filipino San Francisco and Sacramento dioceses as a spiritual advisor during their three-day week for she weekend. He also served as the Filipino Regional Spiritual Director for Region 11. Finally, our speaker has worked closely with our late and beloved Father Joe Aron within our Diocese of Oakland. And now, sisters and brothers, please help me welcome Deco Ben Agustin. I'm your Deacon Ben Augustine. I made my Curcio 38 years ago in 1979 when I was two years old. <laughs> St. Benedict Center in San Francisco, Curcio 415, Decoria of St. James. <laughs> so I'm very pleased to be with you here tonight uh, to talk about how to be fishers of men and women for your upcoming men's and women's cursillos. We're talking really about sponsoring cursillo candidates. So I'm not really too familiar with the Oakland Filipino cursillo movement, so please tell me, when are your upcoming men's and women's cursillo weekends? That's Okay, so you've got plenty of time, you know, to recruit candidates. And um, typically, when you have the women's weekends, how many candidates do you have? And for the men, how many candidates do you have? One or two for the men. <laughs> well, good news, you're no different than the other six Filipino Christian <laughs> No, it's always all with a challenge. And so tonight, what I hope to do is just give you uh, some general fundamental facts, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Um, how many of you have ever sponsored a candidate before on a Curcio weekend? How, raise your hands. It's like all of you, right? And how many of you have been in the Curcio movement at least 10 years? Raise your hands. Okay, there are 50 people here, so we have 500 years worth of experience and knowledge and wisdom here. So I'm not really going to tell you a whole lot that's new, but I am just going to reiterate some of the basic facts that maybe will help us focus. 
this year and make this the most successful year for recruiting candidates ever. Okay? So let's ask a basic question. What is the Crucio for? Why have the Crucio? The Crucio is one of more than a hundred international Catholic movements in the world. Do you know that? The CEO is not the only one. There are more than a hundred. But what is the Crucio for? What do you think? Starts with an E. Evangelize. That's right. The role of the Crucio movement is to evangelize, to spread the good news to others by teaching people what is necessary to live that Christian life, to create an environment, a support group through your group reunions where people can progressively learn how to love God more fervently and also love others for the purpose of being able to go into their own unique, respective, individual environments and transform it. When Jesus was leaving, he was having his ascension, he was going back to heaven after his 40 days with his, with his disciples. He said, go and make disciples. Baptize all people, all nations, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So by virtue of our baptism, every single one of us is called to be an apostle. We're called to be just like those 12 apostles 2,000 years ago who did such tremendous work that today, 2,000 years later, we have one billion Catholics on the planet. Okay? And so that is your call. Right now in your group reunions, you are learning how to do that. Some, I think, have told me you've been together for like 20 years. I've been in a group for 38 years, believe it or not. You meet once a month, 38 years and three of us became deacons just because of that you know, concentrated sharing and, and praying. You know, it helped us to realize we had a call, and that's something that can happen in all of your groups. You can bring people in, you can show them a new way of living and being friends with one another that they've never experienced in any of their other worldly relationships or friendships, and it can inspire them to be wonderful evangelists who transform their world. And so, one of the things I like to um, think about whenever I get involved in some kind of endeavor is a phrase that came out of Stephen Covey's books, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Anybody ever read that book? It came out like in 1990. It's an old book, 27 years old. But the number two principle is begin with the end in mind. So what are we trying to do with these candidates after we recruit them? What do we hope they will do after their four-day weekend is over? What do you think? Continue. Continue. How? Be in a group. That's right. How many of you are in a permanent group now that meets regularly in some time? All of you. That's right. You're kind of sitting in your groups, aren't you? And that's what you want. You want to recruit people who are going to become a member of your group. Or if they're geographically far away, you, you want to, to find a group for them after their weekend. So the goal always, when we're thinking about recruiting a candidate is, I want to make sure I create an environment for them where they are going to persevere in the faith, just like me. And what helped you to persevere in the faith all these decades? It's the friendship that you found in your groups. So the first and foremost thing that a, a sponsor must do if they really want to take on the mantle of responsibility to be a sponsor is ask themselves, am I willing to do whatever is necessary to make sure that my candidate gets into a group after their weekend? If all we're doing is looking for a headcount and getting numbers, well, you know, what's going to happen to those candidates, right? So how many of you here made your Crucio last year? Raise your hands. One. And how many people all together went on a Crucio weekend last year? I don't know, three dozen maybe? Something like that? So we have to ask ourselves, you know, whenever we group an old trail like that and we only see a few people who made the Crucio last week, uh, last year, what do we need to do better this coming year? to ensure that our group continues to grow so that we need an ever and ever larger room for all trades. You know, that's the sign of success. So 
let's talk about um, the precursio. Precursio consists of these steps, you know, searching and selecting and preparing potential candidates for the Curcio weekend, carefully preparing for the weekend by doing all the coordination that's necessary, and then making plans to accompany the new Curciistas on their fourth day. Um, it was Juan uh, Capo who said that transforming individual members and afterwards placing them with their talents to be used wisely and effectively is what is going to transform the world. So when we pick our candidates, we want to make sure that we really know them as friends. How many people right now have a candidate in mind for the upcoming Women's and Men's Curcio? Now, I would ask you, do you really know them? Do you know their lives? If they're married, do you know the names of their spouses? If they have kids, do you know the names of their kids? Do you know their, 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 their history? Do you know what their greatest yearning is? What is their greatest need? The kind of candidates who succeed in the Curcio movement are the ones who are carefully called and screened. And you wanted to find the persons who had a hunger, a hunger for self-improvement. The kind of people who will rise up to become Curcio leaders for decades are the ones who always want to improve themselves and you'll find them among those in the ranks of your, your business profession who are always studying, they're always going for new certifications, they're always you know, getting promoted, they're always trying to advance. These are the kind of people, even if they don't have any kind of real deep Christian faith yet, these are the kind of people that God can really change to become leaders. Eduardo Benin said that our goal is to reach out to the far away. That means, in the past, maybe what we've been doing is picking the low-hanging fruit. It's easy to recruit candidates that we see in our ministry. If, they're, if we're in the choir and we know somebody in the choir, it's easy to ask somebody, hey, you want to make a Curcio weekend? But that's not the point, Eduardo Benin would say. He, say. he would say, these people, in a sense, are already saved. They're already doing God's work. We need to go out into the environment and find people who are potential leaders who just need to get that spark of the Holy Spirit so that when they're reinserted back into their environment after the weekend, they're going to change that environment. Yeah, they're going to come to church too. Maybe they're going to get involved in ministry, but that's not the principal goal. The principal goal of the Christian movement is not to staff the parish ministries is to get people who are out in the world to come in through a Curcio movement, get involved in a life-changing group reunion over decades that enables them to be little St. Pauls and St. Paulines to go out into the world and transform it for Christ. So that's the goal. We want to find those kinds of people. Um, so, Another thing that we should consider when we think about who the sponsor is, by show of hands, how many of you have family members, spouse, parents, children, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, who no longer go to Mass anymore? Raise your hands. Yeah, we all know that. You know why? Because studies have shown in America 75% of all baptized Catholics no longer go to Mass. 75%. That means you, by default, are in the top 25% of the class. But that also means the potential to go out and evangelize is huge. Huge. Because there are three of them for every one of you. Get that? And so it's very easy to find candidates. And I would suggest start with your relatives. Start with your children. It's easy. You have influence on them, right? They know you. They see the Christian witness of you always going out to Christian group reunions, to going to all trails. They know that you're walking with the Lord. That's the kind of witness that you have to give to a potential candidate to make them wonder, as Deacon Ray said, what makes them so happy? How come they don't get so stressed out like I get stressed out? I need some of what they have. I think I'm going to go talk to them, or if they talk to me about something called Curcio, maybe I will pay attention, because I want to have that joy. 
I want to have that laughter. I want to have that uplifted spirit that they always seem to have. I want some of that. So that's what we want to do with our candidates, whoever it is that we reach out to. And I would suggest charity begins at home. So if you know you have children, you have spouse, you have mom and dad, you have aunts, uncles, nephews, nieces who are not really walking in the faith, the Castillo is a great place for them to come because they're not too far away. They're far away, but they're closer than somebody who might be an absolute stranger to you or somebody who's just a coworker. So it's okay to go for those low-hanging fruit. Okay, it's more of a challenge because these people are not in church. You know, it's not like asking a fellow lector, a fellow Eucharistic minister, why don't you try the Crucio? Now you have to start sharing your story with family members. Maybe you've never opened up to them. It's kind of funny. You know, sometimes in their own families, we don't really talk about the really deep emotions and experiences we've had. We're trying to maintain a certain persona, a certain hierarchy in the family. But the only way to really reach out to others and convince them and persuade them that they need to find the Lord is to tell them how you found the Lord. What was that humbling experience for you that convinced you, oh, I can never be happy unless I turn my whole life over to Jesus Christ. And you tell them that story, they will listen because everyone wants to find happiness and joy. So personal witness on the part of the sponsors is very important. Personal witness. And then deep relationship, friendship, deep. That's why I said relatives are easy. Or actually, they're, they're pretty hard. It's hard, it's hard to break habits, right? It's hard to break old habits. Deep relationship. But you have a lot of influence. Deep relationships. Okay, friendships. And then never forget prayer. Oh my God, you got to pray. Pray. So many times we want the best for people and we think it's all on us. But here's a little saying that I always say that reminds me to put things in the right perspective. God is God and I am not. Can we say that? God is God and I am not. I need to lean on the power of Christ to make anything happen. Without God's grace, nothing in my life works out. And so I'm really concerned about somebody else. I want them to come to the Garcia, not to plug in the quota, not to fill the quota, but just because I know it's going to be part of their eternal salvation and get them to heaven. I need to pray to God to give me the words, because on my own, I'm going to fall on my face. So before you ever talk to somebody about the Casillo, always pray in deep humility and say, Lord, you know, you know I can't do this by myself. you got to help me. You give me the words, and you give me the time, and make me brave, because so many times I'm a coward. So many times I don't stand up and say something when I have the opportunity right in front of me to change somebody's life. So pray for courage and pray for the right words to say at the appropriate time. And the Holy Spirit always comes through. I have never known a time in my own life when the Holy Spirit did not come through loud and clear to give God's words to somebody who needed to hear it. Explain the benefits to the person who you want to come to the casino. Tell them that they are going to be a far happier, far better person than they can even imagine. Tell them that that's your own experience. How many of you would say that you are better by virtue of having gone on your three-day casino weekend? Anybody? Yeah, 100%. That's why you persevere. You know there's nothing better than this doesn't mean that Brasillo is like the end-all and be-all ministry. I said there are more than a hundred different Catholic movements, and for those people, they would say that their movement, Legion of Mary, Charismatic, whatever, is the end-all and be-all. The reality is God is just using Brasillo as one of many ways, one of many fingers to reach out into the world to bring his message to them. So let's talk a little bit about who should go to a Brasillo weekend. <coughs> They should be decisive people, people who are not wishy-washy. 
He says if they're wishy-washy kind of people, it's easy for them to backslide later. Okay? So judge carefully the people that you want to invite. Ultimately, we want to have a whole bunch of Crisillo leaders. The Crisillo movement is like a leadership training program. All of you are called to be, like I said, apostles, evangelizers, like St. Paul, St. Pauline. Okay, <laughs> made that up. And so you need decisive people who can make a choice and say yes or no. What does it say in John, let's see, oh, what is it? John 14, how I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I stick you out of my mouth. Ever hear that reading yes. in John? God wants decisive people to be his leaders, right? And then you want influential people, people who don't just want to follow the crowd, who want to be unobserved, who want to not be seen not made a fuss over. You want people who don't mind taking a stand. And these are people who are not necessarily now Christian, you know, in their thinking or their words, but they have some Catholic background and God can build on that, okay? So you want people who can influence others, people who are enthusiastic, not people who are pessimistic. Remember, the Christina weekend is not reform school. This is not a, a weekend for problem children, okay? So if you have people who are narcissists, if you have people who are mean-spirited, if you have people who are pessimists, don't bring them to the Christian weekend. It will not change them. It will only make it miserable for everybody else on the weekend, okay? You want people who are filled with joy, maybe not a holy joy yet, but it will transform to a holy joy. You want people who enjoy life, people who have a spark in their eye. These are the people who are going to animate others and influence them to find Christ. Okay. You want altruistic people, generous-hearted people, people who are selfless, people who don't always think just about themselves and what's in it for me. Like I said, narcissistic people, you don't need. They are so full of themselves, there's no room yet for God. Okay? You can't change that overnight. You can't change it on a three-day weekend. So you want to pick the people who are already good-hearted enough that when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, they are just going to radiate even more joy and grace and be more transparent to God's working out the, His grace in the world. You want people who are able to manifest God's presence to others without any thought about themselves. Okay? And finally, as I said, you want people who are leaders. They already have that kind of natural born or made. And you know, I, I spent five years on active duty as an infantry officer, and they would always teach us, no, we make leaders. We can make a leader out of anyone. Well, yeah, we, we get rid of a lot of people before we finally can make, make those leaders. But the reality is God does give a gift of leadership to quite a few people who are destined in their lives to really be powerful saints in the world. And so your role is to go find them so that you can introduce them to the Christio where they can establish such a strong relationship with Christ that they will use all their time, talent, and money, and energy the rest of their lives for the Lord. Those people are out there. Some of you can see it in your children. Some of you can see it in your relatives. Those are the people you want to you want to invite to the Christian movement. Now, how do you do that? In the old days, they said, don't tell them too much about the Christian. You know, just invite them to come. They're going to find out. And I was, uh, when I went on my Christian week in 1979, that was the school of thinking back then. I had no clue when my mom and dad, see, my mom and dad, invited me to come to the Christian weekend because they had gone on a Christian weekend the year before and they saw how good that was. But, and I was totally blown away. Well, the new school of thinking is, tell them all about it, except for the little surprises, okay? Let them know, because if you don't let people know what's going on in this day and age where information is just readily available on the internet, you know, everywhere, people are used to having full knowledge of things before they get involved in things. So if you keep it a mystery, it's more than likely that people are gonna say, ah, I'm not sure I wanna go on that. You're not telling me enough. You know, you might, you might be doing something to me or, or making me want to do something I don't want to do. So it's far better to tell them about everything. Tell them about the talks. 
Tell them about the prayers. Tell them about the mass. Tell them about the sharing. Tell them everything as much as they want to know. Let them lead you by the questions that they ask. You only have to stop divulging when they stop asking questions, OK? So give them the information, especially young people today. Oh my god, young people today want to feel like they're in control of their life, right? And so they really want information. So if you're going to get a young person to come, like in their 20s or 30s, you're going to have to give them a lot of information. And you're not taking anything away from the efficacy or the effectiveness of the Christian weekend. They have no way of anticipating the power of the personal witness of the speakers who give these rollios. They have no way of anticipating the power of the sacraments that they receive at the Mass. They have no way of anticipating the camaraderie, the love, the joy, the forgiveness, the, the openness of the people that they're going to meet, up, meet on the weekend. There's no way you can describe that. So go ahead and tell them about the talks. Tell them the whole schedule. You know, if, they, if they're curious, show them the schedule. No harm done. They're still going to be amazed as a result of going on that weekend. Now, I said earlier that we have to always think about the end. Begin with the end in mind. So we want our candidates to go on the Castillo weekend so that we can make sure that they're going to be attending uh, group reunions afterwards and also the El Tre. It's so important for them to realize that even if they're in a big group, I think this group has like 30 people you know, in their group, even if they're in a big group, they need to be able to see the bigger church. They need to know that they're going to be expected to come to your monthly El Treas. Let them know that there are other big groups. How many groups does the Open Castillo movement have? 21. 21, amazing. I think you got the, well, Los Angeles is pretty big too, but you're pretty big. That's a pretty big movement. And so they need to be able to see that. And when, I would suggest also, um, when you're grouping now, are you all grouping by your groups? No, no. Oh, good, 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 good. They, they really need to sit with people in other groups so that they can be fertilized with new ideas, you know, with, uh, understand that the spirit moves uh, not just in their group, but also in other groups as well. Um, there are a number of other things that I could talk about, but I know every Casillo movement has their own kind of rules and policies about sponsors and uh, candidates. So let me stop now and just open the floor to any questions that you might have. <coughs> Anything. 